out of the silence a roaring lion he roars for you and i he is there he declared that the grave has no claim on you and me amen so that's the god that we are going to sing about that's the god we put our trust in and he is immovable he is unshakable he is not a man to change his life change his heart change his mind amen so come back to him as we sing the song living hope No claim on 
God. You have won the victory for us. You conquered death and grave. Grave could not hold you for more than three days, Lord Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have conquered death. The greatest fear a man could have. Father, you have conquered it all. So we don't have to fear anything because you are there for us. You are our living God. We put our trust in you, Lord Father, and you never fail us. You are the anchor that is immovable. You are the cornerstone, unshakable. So Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Father, I want to thank each and every one who spent their time, Lord Father. I know that they were blessed, knowing that you are a great God, knowing that you are the way maker in our lives, knowing, Lord Father, that our trust and our hope is in you, the living God. Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would continue to feel this, your presence in their lives, that you would never leave them, Lord Father. In fact, you said that you never leave us. It's only we who leave you and go. But Father, help us, Lord, to come back to you. Come back to the God who is greater than anything. Come back as we are into your presence. Come back into the way maker. That is who you are. Even if I don't see it or feel it, we know that you are working in us, Lord. Thank you, Father, because you are a living God. We give you the glory. We claim victory, Lord, Father. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed. Our Lord Jesus, he died on the cross for us. The song says the moon and stars they wept. The morning sun was dead. The savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross. We all need to understand what our sins, our misgivings, our shortcomings, what they have done. It made the creator of this universe to die such a gruesome death. But that's not it. He is a savior because he gave himself on the cross. But on the third day, the song goes on to say, the ground began to shake. Amen. That's what happened. And the tomb was open. Even today we can go to Israel and see an open tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's sing the song realizing what our Savior did on the cross and above all the victory that he gained for us so much so we can sing hallelujah. Let's sing this. The moon and stars they were, the morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen His body on the cross His blood poured out for us The weight of every curse upon Him One final breath he gave As heaven looked away The Son of God was laid in darkness A battle in the grave The war on death was waged The power of hell forever broken The ground began to shake the stone was rolled away His perfect love could not be overcome Now death is your sting Our resurrected King Has rendered you defeated The stone was rolled away His 
perfect love cannot be overcome. Now that we're in the sting, our resurrected King has rendered you to be. Lord for your sacrifice are we ready to sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb is overcome. Forever he is lifted high, forever he is risen and is no longer in his grave. As he said in the beginning, there is still an open tomb, an empty tomb to go to Jerusalem because the Lord is risen. Amen. Amen. That gives us hope that whatever might be the situation you might be going through today, there is an end, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. And let's continue to rejoice our Lord Jesus. Amen.
What a wonderful name we have in our Lord Jesus. What a beautiful name we have. The name above all names. Whatever might be your need, this name is enough for you. 
when you don't know what to say just call on jesus amen Thank you. Thank you, Sister Ranjini and Brother Karthik and family for leading us during this time of praise and worship. Yes, Christ is our living hope, and what a wonderful name it is that Jesus is our Savior. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome any new members we have, or anybody celebrating any special occasion in their family. uh you can unmute yourself and talk uh i just went through the participant list i think we have uh everybody uh that we're already familiar with so i don't think we've had any new members that came in unless somebody mm -hmm. noticed somebody so but anyway we always uh implore of all our members to go ahead and invite other people to our meetings you know whenever they happen So anyway, yeah, if you were, brother George, uh, Monday is Pastor and Pramila's wedding anniversary. We can wish them and pray for them. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Pastor and Sister Pramila, on your wedding, upcoming wedding anniversary. And, thank, you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We pray that yeah. we pray that God bless you with many, many more. and that you continue blessing cfc uh, also uh, during your uh, you know during the coming years as the lord leads us in case he comes he does not come before then you know we know that the lord's coming <laughs> is very nigh so happy with, anniversary and many 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 more okay. thank you sister rebecca thank you sister rebecca and thank you brother george <laughs> you're welcome I'm saying it on behalf of all the other CFC <laughs> members. <laughs> It's just everyone. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's go to the next slide, uh, brother. And uh, so I don't know if, uh, if they're going to be sharing it or going to be singing it live, Sister Shalini, if you're there. Okay, I'm going to share. Okay. That's fine.
That's it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Sister Shalini and family for uh, edifying and praising God with that song of praises and hallelujah to God for all he's done for us. Our next song is uh, a special Hindi song by Sheeta and Prashant. I am not sure if somebody is sharing it for them or they already have it. Sister Ranjani, did they give it to you? Yes or no? Um, no, okay. I think they are doing it live, I guess. Okay, great. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, it will be okay. live, brother. Okay, brother Prashant. Can you see us? Uh, not yet. Go ahead and start. Uh, um, we, we can see you. Yeah, we can see you. We can okay. see you, brother. Okay. We can see you, brother. I just want to make sure the <laughs> video is there. All right, so uh, we're going to sing a song today uh, that uh, is on the, uh, this happy day of Easter and, uh, and uh, Resurrection Day, which some of us call it. Um, so uh, we were looking for the song and we wanted to do a song that is, uh, you know, that, that, that really sends the message out of what, in the essence of uh, what Christ did on that cross. So the song we're going to sing is in Hindi, and some words are also in Urdu. So we wanted to make sure that you uh, do understand, you know, what it means. So the song basically means he has risen, he has risen, and he has won over, uh, he, has, he has won with his authority over death. And uh, with his power and his might, he has won over death. And uh, he has conquered uh, he has conquered uh, and declared a victory um, uh, or the sting of death. And he has made something that was impossible, possible. And uh, so, the mess, uh, so do, not, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of death. And uh, grab, hold on to Jesus's hand. And he will raise us one day just the way uh, he was risen. So thank God um, that he has risen uh, with his power and his might. So that will be the song. So we'll uh, start. <laughs> Hey! 
सब न डरना हाथ यीशु का तुम थाम लेना मौत से तुम कभी अब न डरना हाथ यीशु का तुम थाम लेना हमको जी उठाएगा हालेलुया मसीह जी उठा हमको भी जी उठाएगा हालेलुया मसीह जी उठा जी उठा जी उठा जी उठा हालेलुया मसीह जी उठा मौत पर इख्तियार है उसका से वो जी उठा जी उठा जी उठा जी उठा हाल बसी जी उठा थैंक यू सो मच अशित and prashant for that beautiful song christ is indeed risen he has conquered the grave and as a result of which we have the uh, you know assurance of eternal life with him for all of us who believe in his name thank you brother mm-hmm. thank you god bless you all okay <clears throat> i think yeah next we have our easter message uh, by our Pastor Emmanuel, I don't think he needs any introduction at all. <laughs> um, everyone knows him very well. So, Brother Emmanuel, Pastor Emmanuel, go ahead and bring us the Easter message for this evening. Thank you. Jesus rose for you. I'm going to base my message on uh, Romans chapter four. verse 25 who was delivered from our from our offenses and was raised again for our justification amplified version says who was betrayed and crucified because of our sins and was raised from from the dead because of our justification our acquittal observing us of all sin before god when god created this world first he said let there be light it was a spoken word the another spoken word was let there be firmament and then it came into existence another spoken word on the third day let there be dry land and plants and it came forth another spoke, spoken word day four let there be sun moon and stars and it came forth another spoken word day five birds and sea animals come forth and it came forth another spoken word in day six let there be animals and humans in the in the land of course humans were specially created by god by his personal touch and the day 7 he rested and he blessed the seven the sabbath day everything was in order and ran with precision so isaac newton said uh, who discovered the theory of gravity and we call him the father of calculus not many of us know that he is a very spiritual man and when he discovered about this universe he noticed that everything was in order and everything was in position and when he saw that his conviction of who the divine lord grows grows stronger and believe that that got to be a god who made all this happen in fact mahatma gandhi said there is an ordinance in the universe there is an unutterable law governing everything and every being that exists or lives god created 
this world out of nothing, his spoken word has power, and at the same time, his spoken word also has consequences. God gave Adam and Eve the freedom to choose. The freedom to do, do good, the freedom to do bad, the freedom to obey or disobey, the freedom to depend or to be independent, a freedom to choose. Of God given them the freedom to choose, but God did not give them the freedom of consequences. We need to catch that. And I know for sure Adam and Eve caught that. Yes, Adam, you got a freedom to choose all these, good and bad. But the consequences, you don't have choice about that. Why? Why is that? Because this is a spoken word from God. God's spoken word was that that tree of good and evil, if you die, you will die if you eat of it. Don't mess with it. Remember, God created this world with that spoken word. So when God spoke this world with a spoken word, everything was in order and everything was in position. We know the sun is about 93 million miles away. And the sun were to say, God, I know that you told me to be a sun 93 miles away, but I think I want to get closer to the earth. And if the sun decide to come a little bit close, there'll be flooding, the glaciers will start to melt, and then the floods start to, every corner of the earth we are flooding, and then this place will not be a place for us to exist anymore. So when God created everything through the spoken word, it has to be in order. So Adam and Eve, by disobeying, the order was disrupted immediately. And that caused death. You know, I work in corrections, everybody know. The first thing the inmate like to always evaluate was the punishment, does the punishment fit the crime all the time? So let us ask this question. Did disobeying God meet the punishment of the time? According to the justice system, Manslaughter, you get three to 10 years. Murder, you get 25 years to life. Aggravated murder, you get 30 years to life. So what about disobeying God's law? Is the punishment death, does that meet the punishment to the time factor or to the punishment factor? Did you ever ask that question? God is a God of order. Even the Trinity, we know the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are all are three distinct persons, but they all function in complete harmony. And they don't conflict, they don't, uh, they are all, everything is in order. So the question then comes is, what then happened in the Garden of Eden? The consequences of disobeying God is death. Wow. If you look at it, death is, is a heavy punishment, so to speak. But Jesus said, God says, even though the consequences of death is heavy, he said, I have no pleasure. Second Peter chapter three, verse nine says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance.
the punishment of disobeying God is death. Whether we like it or not, dear friends, some point in your life, you thought of death. And death can be a fearful factor that we all have to deal with, whether we like it or not. Sometime in life, you have come across this fear of death. We fear of dying alone. We fear dying a painful death. We fear what will happen after we die. We fear leaving our loved ones behind what will happen to our loved ones. We fear the unknown and the death is the ultimate unknown. We fear death because of our sins. We fear standing before God after we die. Sometimes we are afraid what that's going to be like. In fact, as I was working, as you know, I was work, I work in prison. Inmates uh, have confided to other inmates when this COVID was spreading in the month of April and March and April, they were telling to other inmates, if I were to be infected of this COVID, I know I'm going to die. There is a fear element in the prison and 35 of them died. Are you fearful of death? So the question really is, one out of every one person will die someday. No one, no one gets a free pass. Death is really a problem. In fact, Paul says, it is appointed unto man once to die. Does the Lord say that is appointed? No one can skip and no one can postpone. When it's time, we all will be gone. So I want you, I want you to turn to the scriptures. I'm going to read it anyway. Romans chapter 4, verse 25. I'm going to bring some pointers on this text. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Now, sometimes we are wondering again, did the punishment fit the crime? We know the story of Daniel. Uh, he had some enemies during the reign of King Darius and the enemies of Daniel noticed that Daniel was worshiping a different God and King D Darius, uh, he likes Daniel and he wants to give Daniel uh, uh, a plan to set him to rule his kingdom. Of course, Daniel's enemies were very unhappy with that and said, King, uh, why don't you build a statue that reflects you and let for one month everybody to worship you? And they know Daniel will not do that. In fact, Daniel knew about this decree. If anybody were to not bow down to this image, uh, they will be, there will, the consequences will be death. And sure enough, Daniel was up in his room and he was three times. A day he was facing Jerusalem and he was praying. And then the animals, enemies of uh, uh, Daniel told King Darius, to said, look King, there's one man that you liked so much, he disobeyed your law. And of course we know the story is that this King Darius was not too happy that he, needs, he has to throw him into the diner, diner's, uh, lion's den. But the question that I'm going to raise here is that according to the law of the Medes and Persians, the king cannot change what he has decreed. If an earthly king himself cannot change 
what he has decreed what about god what about god so let me give you some hope with the text that i just read romans chapter 4 25 who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification number 1 jesus rose so that we will not be separated from god ever the separation that caused in the garden of eden is what jesus rose for let me tell you why if you notice that jesus cried out on the cross and he said my god my god why have you forsaken me what was jesus going through on the cross at this point he is facing a separation you know the father the son and the holy ghost they never separate they are always in oneness in unity in harmony and for him to cry out on the cross to say crying out with agony my god my god why thou hast forsaken me because the separation is taking place at this time between the father and the son that is experiencing hell as far as jesus is concerned it's true that he was going through unbearable pain physically but what was more unbearable for him is the separation from the father let me ask you this what is the reason you want to be in heaven is it because you fear hell or is it because you fear of getting separated from god and that was what jesus rose for he came forth to life because he wants to join us back from the separation and that separation he has to experience on the cross in order for us to be connected with the father again when moses was given instruction how the tabernacle tabernacle were to be built we know from the holy place to the most holy place there is a curtain the curtain is the one that separates any sinners not to enter into the most holy place and if you are not cleansed and if you are have that sinful nature still with you uh, and you cannot enter into that most holy place and if you do you will be just wiped out you cannot enter into the presence of god but on the day when jesus died on the cross that curtain got torn down so that now we can get access to the throne of grace through jesus christ there is no more separation so point number 1 is jesus died so that we will not be separated from the father anymore number 2 Jesus rose because of our offenses so that he can make us righteous now when when god raised jesus then our sins are cleared now jesus if you look at the text again carefully let me read it again so that it's not coming from me who was delivered for our offenses and who was raised again for our justification he did not say jesus rose because he is the son of god that's not why jesus rose from the grave so which means when jesus resurrection just means that every sin that we have committed need to be cleared through the remission of his blood so the resurrection of jesus is so special just for you and for me it's not about him 
is about us. He rose to make us not only to be one with God, he rose for the remission of sins. And if, not, if any of our sins is not cleared, then I'm not sure what the resurrection is going to be. So that was the second point. The third point, based on the text, Jesus rose not to make bad people good, but to make dead people to live again. That's what the text is saying. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So Jesus on the cross, the main, main reason is to make sure that dead people come to life. That's why in the Garden of Eden, what was the consequences? The consequ consequences is death. So the resurrection, when Jesus died on the cross, resurrection for Jesus means resurrection for us. The pyramids, which means to say the tomb could not hold him any longer. Death is strong, but life is stronger. St stronger than dark, darkness, but the light is stronger. Stronger than wrong, but the right is stronger. All the opposite side of evilness appears to be strong, but righteousness is much stronger because it will conquer all that is evil. So Jesus' resurrection is our resurrection. The pyramids, the pyramids of Egypt are famous because they contain the mummified bodies of ancient Egyptian kings. The Westminster Abbey in London is renowned, renounced because it rests the bodies of English nobles and notables. Muhammad a tomb is noted for the stone coffin and the bones it contains. Taj Mahal was built as a memorial to his wife, the one of India's Shash. Ellington's uh, cemetery in Washington, DC is known to honor resting people of many outstanding Americans. But the garden tomb of Jesus is famous not because of what is inside, but because it is empty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So there should be no fear to face that because Jesus rose just for you and for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. The sorry story has been, was told of uh, a young boy, about four years old, was dying of an incurable disease. At first, the little boy, he couldn't really understand what death is all going to be like. So uh, at one point, uh, as the medical doctors were talking to the parents and he overheard, and one, one, one day he asked his mother, Mother, am I going to die? And the mother said, yes, dear. And then the son asked, but mother, can you please tell me what death is going to be like? And the mother got emotional. She went to the kitchen and she cried to God and said, God, please give me an answer that will satisfy my son. Please tell me what I should tell to my son. And she prayed. And she went back to the room, sat down on the bed. She said to the son, do you remember how you were used to play outside all day? When you came inside at night, you were so tired. You just fell down on the couch and you slept. In the morning, 
you woke up in your own bed during the night, your father could come along and pick you up and carry you to your own bed. That's what death is like. One day you will lie down. One day you will lie down and go to sleep. But your heavenly father will pick you up and he will carry you through to your own bed. That morning, that resurrection morning, you will rise up and you will be in your own room in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The little boys, little boy smiled and, and nodded. And several weeks later, he died peacefully. That is what death is like for a Christian. This morning, some of y'all could have watched that uh, uh, funeral service of uh, uh, Prince uh, Philip. One thing that caught my attention was that uh, the NBC uh, reporter said that the queen has something to be comforted. And she said her Christian faith will bring comfort to her. A Christian faith will bring hope to her, in other words. That is what we as Christians can lean on to, that we have this comfort, this hope in Jesus Christ, that he rose just for you and for me, and we don't have to fear that. Hallelujah, Christ is reason, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor, for... Hallelujah. Hallelujah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, Christ Praise is the, Lord. That's the amen, hope that amen, we have. Amen. Yeah. And uh, as it says um, in Ephesians 2, God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. So that is uh, the key thing. We don't have to fear, just like you said, Queen Elizabeth was not fearing because the Christian belief knew that because the husband had put his faith in Christ and along with her, they would be with each other uh, when uh, in the presence of God one day. So thank you so much, uh, Pastor. Uh, thank, you. Let's, thank you. God bless you and God bless you on our anniversary again. Second time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a special Telugu duet by uh, Sister Sophie and, and Sudhaka. We are grateful that you know, all of us know the terrible time that they went through and how God has, you know, brought Brother Sudhakar back to us, you know, after many months. And we're extremely glad that he's with us and able to share a song with Sophia. Go ahead, Brother Sudhakar. Okay. Thank you, Brother George. Thank you, CFC family. Pastor Sam, so thank you so much. That was a powerful sermon, actually. That really reminded me, like as Apostle Paul says, for to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. I wish as Christians we all can boldly say that, you know, like uh, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. He sees death being the physical death on this this thing being, you know, like that's what is the power of the resurrection. That's what uh, you and I, everyone, every Christian believer knows. Yeah, for, to, for us, yeah, we have responsibilities, we have certain things in this world, but that is not the end because resurrection is coming for every one of us. So my dear CFC family, as Brother Judge said uh, last year, uh, close to four months, I was hospitalized close to four months. In that period, close to three months, I was completely paralyzed, neck below, Nothing except my head, which I could nod. Other than my head, nothing else moved. And uh, I, I used to consider myself a very healthy human being. And, uh, you know, like, but, uh, you know, when God does things, we don't know how it happens. And uh, sometimes, but I believe there is something I, I learned and my family learned and most of my other people learned is there is something good that comes out of even the bad things. So in all these things, when I was going through, the only thing that was working in me is my mind. That by God's grace, my nothing got affected in my brain. And uh, I used to sing two songs in my mind all the time, play again and again and again. 
like a uh, like a CD player and a continuous thing. As if I'm awake, that's what goes through my mind. And one of those two songs we are going to sing for you today, because uh, it's a Telugu song. The meaning of it, especially the stanza too, the meaning is when I was walking in the on the road to death and on the road of death, you came like a great physician. and you gave me a second birth i used to claim that promise god this i'm claiming this promise to myself and to my family i used to sing that song all the time in my mind especially the second stanza and uh, we are going to sing that for you because as uh, this it's all about death and resurrection death and a new life and we all know that we have an eternal life that's never fades away that never we, there's no more sorrow no more pain and that's the promise we know we all have one day it's going to be there but until then we still have to be in this world dealing with the pain dealing with the sorrow uh, but uh, god brought me back to my family my family has undergone a lot of pain a lot of stress and all that but uh, god is merciful god is kind and uh, god healed me and brought me back Uh, to the joy of my family and also the family of the entire cfc and telugu fellowship and to my siblings so the somehow strangely the same song it seems sophia was also singing all the time at home i don't know god has his ways so that's the song we are going to sing for you now Oh, 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Sudhakar. Uh, just to see your cheerful face, it's a blessing to all of us. And an encouragement also. Yeah, we take uh, life so much for granted. But anyway, it's good God resurrected you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You have the real story of resurrection in your life. Amen. And all for all time. of us too, you know. Thank you. God bless you and continue to use you and uh, may continue to recover from whatever effects are there. Uh, both Raj and myself have dreamt of you playing badminton. So, hope it comes true. Thank you. Anyway, what's happening next, uh, brother? Isaac, okay. We have a, a special Hindi song by brother Norman Kutemperer, and uh, he's, this is really astounding because Brother Norman Kutemperer is a Malayali, but he loves singing Hindi songs, so it's praising God. So we're going to turn it over to him, and he's going to tell us about this special song that he's going to sing and encourages all of us, Brother Norman. Thank you for that introduction, Brother George. I have a uh, Hindi song here. It is about the uh, resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's called uh, Kudaki Muhabbat. Kudaki Muhabbat se mamur hokar mishika uttar aya hai. By the love of God, Misiha has appeared above us. This is a uh, Hindi song in the Kamali style, hope you will like it. Kudaki Mohabat se Mamur ho kar Kudaki Mohabat se Mamur ho kar 
Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Norman, for sharing that song about God's love for each and every one of us. And uh, that's what uh, Easter is all about, where God left 
heaven and came down to earth and became one of us and offered himself as a willing sacrifice so that we through his sacrifice could be in his presence one day before he comes back or after we are gone to be with him. Thank you so much. I hope you're all enjoying. You're welcome. Hope you guys are all enjoying all these Easter songs that we have been singing in different languages, Hindi, Tamil, and uh, also Telugu. We have one more song that our Telugu Fellowship sang uh, at uh, one of our GPN programs, and it's called Geetam Geetam Jai Jai Geetam, which talks about the victory that Christ assured all of us through his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. I'll have Brother uh, Prem share this uh, song. I think he has it with him. Go ahead, Brother Prem.
Thank you so much, Telugu uh, Fellowship. You know, if, uh, we haven't been meeting each other for a long time, but in that group, we had Ajay, Sharon, Nissi, and of course, we had Sindhu and, and, and uh, yes, Sindhu and uh, Manoj, and we had Tracy, who was on the guitar, and his wife, Donna. So thank you all for sharing this song with us. And uh, so just uh, as a PR for them, we have this GPN, uh, Telugu, Hindi, English uh, fellowship going on online throughout the week. And so that song was taken from them. And thank you, Nisi and Frame for organizing that and uh, uh, song for us and that event for us. Next, I think we have the announcements. Um, again, uh, just piggybacking on what I just said. Next month, uh, mm -hmm. our meeting is on May the 15th, which is again the third Saturday. We meet normally at 6 p.m. And um, uh, so please be there and bring your friends with us. And of course, if you're inviting them, make sure you share our uh, meeting ID and uh, our password uh, to, so that they can join us. So May 15th, as usual, is our third uh, Saturday meeting. And in that meeting, you know, you just saw a snippet of what uh, uh, we are doing in GPN. Uh, GPN, uh, you know, was uh, Brother Karthik introduced and Ranjani introduced us to GPN and we have, you know, grown along with that. I mean, he does his own uh, Tamil program. He has an English program and uh, he gave uh, the, an opportunity came up to launch a Telugu program too. And uh, Nisi and Prem have taken the leadership on that and have been organizing that uh, fellowship for many, many months, almost a year now, ever since the pandemic started. And so they'll be sharing about how they got involved, both Karthik and, uh, and uh, Anjani and Prem and Nisi will be sharing to us about how they got involved <coughs> in GPN and how that online ministry is reaching the globe. You know, we have a lot of participants in all those meetings uh, reaching us, uh, you know, that join us from different parts of the US and different parts of the world. And uh, so it, it is reaching out. So they're being true ambassadors for Christ in, and they'll be sharing that with us. Uh, so thank you so much for guys, what you're doing. God bless you all in, in doing what you're doing and also sharing with us. So that uh, Telugu GPN meeting for all those who are just interested uh, happens on uh, Saturday night so that it's like 9.30 a.m. in India. And it's probably because of the time change, it's at 11.30 p.m our time here in Ohio. So if you ever want to join, uh, just uh, let uh, one of us know and we'll send you the link for that, you know. And also Brother Karthik will be talking about the Tamil and also the English uh, thing next month. And so we'll be having the links to all that too. And I uh, just wanted to tell you in uh, June, uh, we are still heroically planning on having an outdoor <laughs> picnic. We don't know how things uh, will turn out because the situation is so fluid. We thought, oh, by that time we'll all be vaccinated and. We'll be back to you know life as usual, but apparently, as you're seeing, and as many people in India also are noticing right now, things really haven't changed a lot, and things have kind of uh, you know the cases have been rising because people have somehow let down their guard. So hopefully, by God's grace, uh, we again there's no hundred percent guarantee. We are planning by faith that we will meet on the third Saturday in uh, June at uh, the Dublin Kaufman Park, you know, as we normally do assuming everything is okay. And we'll keep you updated about that. And the same thing, we plan similarly to have our retreat also in July and, uh, and also participate in the India Festival in August and so on. So there are a lot of things with a lot of unknowns, only God uh, you know, is in control of everything. But um, mm -hmm. as human beings, we are planning by faith and if God's will is, it'll uh, fall in place. If it's not, then we'll continue to meet on Zoom. So. I'm sure all of you all are tired. I hear from members saying, oh, we are tired of Zoom and everybody's tired mm -hmm. of Zoom and they want to get together in public and do it so safely. So hopefully uh, by God's grace, we'll come to that. So with that, we'll go to the next element of our program, which is the children's program. And I'll turn it over to Nissi and uh, to uh, guide us through that program. Thank you again, guys. Hope you're enjoying. Uh, this uh, Easter celebration with us. I mean, it's a great thing to celebrate Easter because without Easter, you know, there wouldn't be hope for any one of us. So over to you, sister. Praise the Lord. Um, hello, CAFC families. I wish you all a blessed Easter. Uh, now we have our children, CAFC next. Uh, they are going to worship and honor our resurrected savior. Um, 
I praise and thank God for the provision that he provided us with to connect with our children like never before. And I pray, I thank all the parents uh, who helped us put this event together. And I really appreciate all the children who worked very hard for this event. Uh, let us all worship and praise and uh, adore our resurrected savior, our Lord and our King. I hand this uh, time to Olivia to lead us uh, with the children's program. Over to you, Olivia. All right, hi everyone. Welcome to the CAFC Next Children's Program. The CAFC Next Children have prepared a wonderful program for you to worship and praise Jesus along with them. So first, I would love to introduce you to the CAFC Next Children's Choir singing Hallelujah. So let us worship along with them. A crown of thorns placed on his head. He knew that he would soon be dead. He said, did you forget me, Father, did you? They nailed him to a wooden cross. So all the world would feel the loss of Christ the King.
hallelujah indeed. Thank you, the CFC Choir, for singing that song. Next, we have Abel sharing about communion and the cross and how important this is to the Easter season. Hello, everyone. I thank the Lord for this opportunity to share my thoughts with you all today. The topic that I'm going to share is Holy Communion. Communion simply refers to an act of sharing or exchanging. The term communion is derived from the Latin word communio, which means sharing in common. In the spiritual context, it refers to an act of worship to God where sacred bread and wine will be consumed by the believers of Jesus Christ. I have been a part of the Junior Bible Quiz Ministry for several years, and I would like to mention one of the questions that I had learned about communion is that in communion, what is symbolized by the bread and the cup? The answer is the bread represents the body of Jesus and the cup represents his blood, which he shed for our sins. The answer is based on the scripture portion from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24 to 25. And whenever he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Holy Communion, also known as the Lord's Supper, is taken in remembrance of what our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. At the cross, God took all of her sicknesses and diseases and put them on Jesus' originally perfect and healthy body so that we can walk in divine health. The Bible says by stripes we are healed. There is healing in the bread when you partake in Holy Communion in remembrance of what Jesus did on the cross. In Luke chapter 22, verse 20, Jesus tells us, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Apostle Paul tells us that the blood of Jesus brings forgiveness of sins. Taking part in the Holy Communion is one of the most significant spiritual experiences of being born again. Jesus' blood he shed on the cross, gives us right standing before God, and we can go boldly to God's presence. Five years ago, I had a sudden urge in me that wanted me to be baptized. I shared my desire with my family, and after much prayers and confirmation from the Lord, I was baptized on Easter Day in the year 2016. It was one of the most blessed days of my life taking part in my first communion service on a day when we celebrated the risen Savior was an absolute honor. I would also like to share another question that I learned from the Junior Bible Quiz. What four things should we do when we participate in a communion service? The answer is, remember Jesus' death, look forward to his return, examine our relationship with God, enjoy fellowship with Jesus and our fellow Christians. In conclusion, I would like to encourage each of you that we have hope in God and every time we take part in communion, it is remembering the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Abel, for that. Let us always remember to uh, remember what God has done for us and sacrificed for us in order for us to live. Next, we have Jessica singing King of Kings, which tells us how Jesus saved us from our sins by dying for us. In the darkness we will wait without hope, without light. So from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill
To rebuild the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost. To redeem the old creation, you do not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you sought to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus for our sake you died. Jessica for singing that song. Next, Caleb will be singing Amen for us by King and Country, which tells about the resurrected life we have in Jesus now. Say a prayer Down for love and up for air Underwater overjoyed Water for a thirsty soul Water for a thirsty soul Baptize me into your love Oh my spirit's overcome Body, mind and skin and bone Love I'm gonna make it known Love I'm gonna make it known I'm coming alive with you I was living alive till you I'm coming alive with you All the people say
All the people say singing that song, Amen Indeed. Now, Gideon will be sharing a, a sermon about trusting in God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are three boys who are very strong believers in God. One day, the king set up an idol so all the people who lived there could bow down to it. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to worship the idol. King Nebuchadnezzar called them into his room. He had his strongest men tie them up, and the Bible says in Daniel 3, chapter 3, 16 through 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Then the king set the furnace to seven times as much as it normally is. And as the soldiers threw them in, they died from the heat of the furnace. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego weren't even hurt or burned at all. They even saw four people were in the furnace because God was with them. And when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out, nothing happened to them. And the king said that everyone must now believe in the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were saved because they had faith and trusted God. So I have a question for you. How much do you God trust God with your life? Thank you, Gideon, for that message about trusting in God. I think it's always important to remember that God is watching over us and he is constantly helping us and providing for us in our lives. I feel like this message also really connects with the Easter season as well. Just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego trusted God with their lives, Jesus similarly trusted God with his life. Just before he was crucified, Jesus went to the Mount of Olives to pray just before he was betrayed by Judas. I'd like to tell you a verse from Luke 22. It's verses 42 and 43. It says, Father, this is when Jesus is, is praying. He says, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. Jesus trusted God with his life and went on to carry the plan that God set for him. Although it seemed hard, God was with Jesus and sent his angels to help Jesus and strengthen him and give him more hope. We must always remember that even if it's hard, ignore, uh, trusting in God is the best thing to do. God will help us along the way, and he will never turn our backs on us. Amen. Uh, now we have JC singing Singing Deep by Hillsong, which tells about the safety and assurance we have in Christ. 
Happy Easter to you all. I'm going to be singing Sinking Deep by Hillsong Young and Free. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, JC, for singing that song. Uh, amen. I hope you all had a wonderful time worshiping and praising along with the CFC Next children. And I hope you enjoyed their performances. And thank you to the CFC children for also using your talents to worship and praise God. Uh, I hand it over to George Uncle now. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was <laughs> awesome. You know, I mean, we're so glad that we have such a uh, wonderful children in our Bible study, in our fellowship and uh, wonderful parents behind them, you know, mm -hmm. for encouraging them to come and sing and, uh, you know, praise God. So great job, Nissi and Graham and Olivia, uh, our narrator and, and future MC or current MC, whatever, <laughs> but you're doing a great, great job, really. God's using you and, and great job for all the children. Thank you so much. And, um, Let's see what Brother Isaac has on our next part of our program. I'd like to uh, share about our, I'd like to, share, yeah, the CFC newsletter. You know, Columbus Ambassadors for Christ, we meet once a month, you know, but we do a ton of things throughout the rest of the three weeks. And so we showcase what we, we, try, we do in the remaining three weeks of the month uh, to you guys. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. And one of the things that we do is uh, using uh, the talent that Brother Isaac has to produce the CFC newsletter. Uh, Brother Isaac, you could go back and put that screenshot, I mean, that slide back on because it has the information for uh, sending the newsletter. Yeah, so it's published uh, during the last week of the month. 
And so you have time still to send in an article uh, to share. I mean, I know there are a ton of good writers here. You know, many of the things that we do here, including the children reciting the Bible verses, et cetera, from junior Bible quiz. So, I mean, there are some families we have here who have children who would love to have them participate in those, uh, in those quizzes and other things which will shape them to do good and, uh, you know, uh, for Christ and also good in school. So if you want to do that, you know, please get in contact with us. Now, as far as the newsletter is concerned, it comes out in the last week of every month. Email, uh, you know, whatever article you have, uh, Brother Isaac and uh, Sister Vijay, I think, will, you know, edit it for you. And I don't know, Rebecca's yeah. just mentioning that this month is exclusively a production of the children. I don't know, Brother Isaac can correct me. And uh, if that's the case, so please send your articles in. Uh, final yeah. song. Yes, brother. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. And stay yeah, there. actually, we uh, we wanted to do like a, a children's section, so we will still invite uh, the regular contributors uh, because uh, I know uh, Sister Rebecca and uh, Sister Ranjini and uh, Sister Nisi they do their regular contributions. So we will still keep that, but there will be a special edition that we, uh, you know, the section that we will uh, dedicate for the children. So already I have received few articles uh, from them. So I'm just waiting. So we still have one more week time. So please take your time and uh, uh, send it before uh, uh, the, the next third Saturday. Uh, I mean, before this next uh, Saturday or something, if you can send like that, it will be great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Isaac, for the clarification. So uh, I'd invite Brother Karthik to share his last song with us. It's an Easter, special Easter song, Because He Lives. It's a great joy to be in the presence of the Lord. We're going to sing this song, Because He Lives. Amen? Because He Lives. Even as we celebrate Easter, we know God who died on Good Friday, He's alive. There's still an empty tomb if we go to Israel. What does that mean to us? Because he lives, we can live forever. We have a blessed hope that in Christ we are more than conquerors. So come sing along with us as we sing the song, Because He Lives. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came
Thank you so much, Brother Kartik. Yes, because he lives, we can face tomorrow. So um, with that, uh, we'll go for our final blessings uh, for this evening. Thank you again, all of you, for joining us. And I'll ask Pastor to close with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, the resurrection, Lord, make things so different the way we live and the way we're going to live, Father. Present, past, and future is because of the resurrection, Lord. The past, you provided the plan of salvation, Father. The present, we have to live according to your plan of salvation, Father. The future, we're looking forward for that day when you appear in the clouds of heaven, Father, that because of the resurrection, we all can be one with God again. What a blessed hope we have. Bless CFC, Lord. Bless all those who participated, Father, who lifted the name of Jesus in their songs, who lifted the name of Jesus in the messages, even the little children's, Father. They are here to glorify your name. Hear our prayers, Lord. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Okay. I think, uh, again, I have a few more slides if uh, Brother uh, Isaac can share. Okay. Our next meeting, again, as a reminder, is May 15, 2021. We'll be still meeting on Zoom that day, and we'll update you on the next, uh, you know, especially what's going to happen in July and June. I mean, um, July, uh, June, July, and August, I'm sorry. Okay, well, uh, thank I, you I just want to add. I just sure. want to add something. Uh, Karthik will give a message on uh, the power of prayer. Because, oh. uh, yeah, so even though we're talking about this network thing, I think Karthik will give a short message on the power of prayer. I just want to uh, highlight that. Okay. And also Thank the CFC pray. members, if those who feel anything about the meetings that we're going to have uh, during the out, during out in the fields, please let us know. We want to hear from you as well. Happy Easter. God bless you. And uh, we'll meet you again next month. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Well, we have a social time right now.